Hello everybody. And welcome to Univ English channel. It's all my pleasure to meet you again in this series of e-learning lectures, aimed at developing your knowledge and skills in the area of ESP, English for specific purposes. This is lecture number 11. Types and Features of ESP. By the end of this lecture, learners will be able to Define the absolute and variable characteristics of ESP. List the types of ESP. Identify the factors influencing the use of ESP. But, before we move forwards, if you have not been here before, then, welcome to the Univ English channel. If you do like videos like this, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. And also smash the notification bell. To receive notifications of when I produce more videos like this. So, let's begin with this question. What are the main types and features of ESP? Definition of ESP Scholars have offered different definitions of ESP over time. Mackay and Mountford, 1978 page 2, state that, ESP is generally used to refer to the teaching of English for a clearly utilitarian purpose. Robinson, 1991 page 2, claims that students learn English not because they are interested in the English language or English culture as such, but because they need English for study or work purposes. Anthony, 1997 page 910, considers that some people describe ESP as simply being the teaching of English for any purpose that could be specified. Others, however, were more precise describing it as the teaching of English used in academic studies or the teaching of English for vocational or professional purposes. Base Turkman, 2006 page 18, states that an ESP language is learned not for its own sake or for the sake of gaining a general education, but to smooth the path to entry or greater linguistic efficiency in academic, professional or workplace environments. Features of ESP According to Strevens, 1988 page 12, ESP can be described in terms of absolute and variable characteristics. The absolute characteristics of ESP are listed as follows. 1. Designed to meet specified needs of the learner. 2. Related in content, that is to say, in its themes and topics, to particular disciplines, occupations, and activities. 3. Centered on the language appropriate to those activities in syntax, lexis, discourse, semantics, etc., and analysis of the discourse. 4. Designed in contrast to general English. 5. It can be restricted to the language skills to be learned for example reading. Strevens claims that two variable characteristics may be attributed to ESP, but not necessarily. 1. Restricted as to the language skills to be learned, that is to say, reading only, and 2. Not taught according to any preordained methodology. Dudley Evans and Street John, 1998 page 45, propose a more precise definition. They note that ESP is in contrast with general English and specify additional variable characteristics. Accordingly, three absolute characteristics are defined as follows. 1. ESP is defined to meet specific needs of the learners. 2. ESP makes use of underlying methodology and activities of the discipline it serves. 3. ESP is centered on the language, grammar, lexis, register, skills, discourse, and genres appropriate to these activities. Also, five variable characteristics are defined as follows. 1. ESP may be related to or designed for specific disciplines. 2. ESP may use, in specific teaching situations, a different methodology from that of general English. 3. ESP is likely to be designed for adult learners, either at a tertiary level, institution or in a professional work situation. It could, however, be for learners at secondary school level. 4. ESP is generally designed for intermediate or advanced students, and 5. Most ESP courses assume some basic knowledge of the language system, but it can be used with beginners. Types of ESP Brunton, 2009 page 22, 
states that ESP is today more vibrant than ever with a bewildering number of terms created to fit the increasing range of occupations that have taken shelter under the ESP umbrella. Traditionally, ESP is divided into two main branches, English for academic purposes, EAP, and English for occupational purposes, EOP. David Carter, 1983, identifies three types of ESP. A. English as a restricted language. B. English for academic and occupational purposes. C. English with specific topics. Accordingly, the language used by air traffic controllers or by waiters are examples of English as a restricted language. Mackay and Mountford, 1978 page 4-5, states that the language of international air traffic control could be regarded as special, in the sense that the repertoire required by the controller is strictly limited and can be accurately determined situationally, as might be the linguistic needs of a dining room waiter or air hostess. However, such restricted repertoires are not languages, just as a tourist phrase book is not grammar. Knowing a restricted language would not allow the speaker to communicate effectively in novel situation, or in contexts outside the vocational environment. According to Carter's classification both English for academic purposes, EAP, and English for occupational purposes, EOP, fall under the same umbrella of ESP. Hutchinson and Waters, 1987 page 6, underline also the fact that there is not a clear-cut distinction between EAP and EOP. People can work and study simultaneously, it is also likely that in many cases the language learned for immediate use in a study environment will be used later when the student takes up, or returns to, a job. Different from Carter, Hutchinson and Waters, 1987, argue that ESP is categorized into three basic categories, see figure 1. English for Science and Technology, EST. English for Business and Economics, EBE, and English for Social Studies, ESS. Within each category, further subdivisions can be identified, such as English for Academic Purposes, EAP, and English for Occupational Purposes, EOP. In the former category, the learners need the language to study a field of interest such as history or psychology, while in the latter category, EOP, the learners use it to complete part or all of a job. EAP can include disciplines such as computer science, engineering, economics, exact sciences, psychology, literature, and so on. While, EOP may include presentations for technicians, pilots, car mechanics, or medical personnel and the like. The field of ESP has spawned a wide variety of subfields over time, each with its own acronym, indicating how rapidly the sphere has expanded. The most common are, English for Science and Technology, EST, Vocational English as a Second Language, VESL, English for Vocational Purposes, EVP, English for Specific and Academic Purposes, ESAP, English for Professional and Academic Purposes, EPAP, English as a Lingua Franca in Academic Settings, ELFA, English for Occupational Purposes, EOP, English for Business Communication, EBC, English for Socio-Cultural Purposes, ESCP, English for General Business Purposes, EGBP, English for Medical Purposes, EMP, English for Legal Purposes, ELP, English for Academic Legal Purposes, EALP, English for Research Publication Purposes, ERPP. And in this digital era, recent editions have included, Electronic Business English, EB, Electronic Medical English, EME. Conclusion Research revealed that ESP has now extended to address other areas such as English for Academic Purposes, EAP, English for Occupational Purposes, EOP, English for Vocational Purposes, EVP, English for Medical Purposes, EMP, English for Business Purposes, EBP, English for Legal Purposes, ELP, and English for Socio-Cultural Purposes, ESCP, Belcher 2009. We have to keep in mind that the main goal of an ESP is to help students understand and communicate in any situation and particularly in the working environment or a future one.
Following their objectives, learners should be involved to acquire language level which enables them to learn and use specialized vocabulary required in a given occupation.